I sat on the worn-out couch, a couch that once held stories of laughter and late-night movies. Now, it was just an old piece of furniture in a room filled with memories of a happier past. Sophie, my three-year-old angel, was upstairs, her gentle breaths a stark contrast to the heavy air of our home. I glanced at the clock again. It was past 10 p.m. Mark was late, as had become his norm. The sound of the key turning in the lock finally broke the silence. I stood up, smoothing my shirt, not sure why I still bothered to look presentable for him. Mark, I called out as he stepped in, looking more a stranger than the man I married. You're late. He didn't meet my eyes, just grunted a response. Work. It's always work. His voice, once filled with warmth and affection, now carried a cold, distant tone. I tried to sound casual, Sophie asked about you today. She wanted to know when daddy would be home. He shrugged off his coat, hanging it carelessly on the rack. Kids ask a lot of things. Doesn't mean we always have answers. I felt a twinge of pain in my heart. Maybe we could do something this weekend? Just the three of us? Sophie would love that. Mark snorted, his tone laced with sarcasm. A family outing? With everything that's going on? Don't be naive, Lily. My hands trembled slightly. This wasn't the man I fell in love with. It's important, Mark. She needs her father. He walked to the fridge, pulling out a beer. What she needs is a miracle. Not me playing pretend in a park. I couldn't hold back my tears. She's your daughter, Mark. How can you be so cold? He took a swig of his beer, avoiding my gaze. I'm being realistic, Lily. This isn't the life I wanted. A sick child, a house that feels more like a hospital. I followed him into the kitchen, my voice rising. And what about me? Do you think I enjoy watching our daughter suffer? Do you think this is the life I dreamed of? Mark slammed the beer bottle on the counter. I don't know, Lily. I really don't. But I know I can't do this anymore. I felt a surge of anger. You want to walk away? From your own child? He drained his beer in one long gulp. I need space. I can't deal with this, suffocation. Suffocation? I echoed, disbelief in my voice. Is that what your family is to you now? Mark turned away, his shoulders tense. It's not just that. It's everything. The constant hospital visits, the medical bills, the way our lives revolve around Sophie's illness. I didn't sign up for this. I was at a loss for words. How had our love turned into this bitter reality? So, what's your plan, Mark? Leave us? Start over somewhere else? He didn't answer, just walked past me, his footsteps heavy against the wooden floor. I stood there, a mix of emotions churning inside me. Anger, sadness, and a profound sense of betrayal. Later, as I lay in bed, the space next to me cold and empty, I listened to the distant sound of Mark's TV from the other room. The divide between us had grown too vast to bridge. The man I married, the father of my child, was now a stranger living under the same roof. The hospital room was stark and clinical, a sharp contrast to the warm, lived-in feel of our home. Sophie lay in the small hospital bed, her tiny chest rising and falling steadily. I sat beside her, holding her small hand, trying to draw strength from her innocent slumber. Nurse Janet walked in, her face a mask of professional kindness. How's our brave girl doing today, Lily? I managed a weary smile. She's a fighter. Always has been. Janet checked Sophie's vitals, her movements efficient and gentle. She's in good hands here. The surgery team is one of the best. I nodded, my throat tight with unspoken fears. I know. I just wish Mark could be here more. She keeps asking for him. Janet gave me a sympathetic look. Fathers often find it hard to cope with these situations. But you're doing an amazing job. I sighed, feeling the weight of loneliness. It's hard doing it alone, you know? He's just, not the same anymore. As if on cue, Mark walked in, his arrival less comforting than I had hoped. He glanced at Sophie and then at me, his expression unreadable. How is she? The same, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. 
he fiddled with his phone, avoiding eye contact. I can't stay long. Work's crazy. I felt a flash of anger. Work, right. Because that's what's important right now. Mark looked up, his eyes cold. What do you want from me, Lily, to sit here and watch her sleep? I bit back a sharp retort, focusing on Sophie instead. She asked for you today, Mark. She misses her dad. He shrugged, his detachment like a physical barrier. I'm here, aren't I? Before I could respond, Sophie stirred, her little voice weak, but clear. Daddy? Mark's face softened momentarily as he moved closer to her. Hey, princess. Daddy's here. Sophie smiled faintly, reaching out for him. Stay with me, daddy. I watched, a mix of hope and sorrow in my heart. Mark hesitated, then sat on the edge of the bed. I can't stay long, Sophie. Daddy has to work. Her smile faded, a look of understanding far beyond her years in her eyes. It's okay, daddy. I love you. Mark forced a smile, patting her hand. I love you too, kiddo. As he stood to leave, I felt a surge of resentment. She needs you, Mark. We need you. He paused, his back to us. I'm doing what I can, Lily. But his words rang hollow in the sterile room. I watched him leave, a familiar sense of abandonment settling over me. Sophie's hand gripped mine, her small presence a reminder of the fight ahead of us. The room fell silent again, save for the beeping of the monitors. I leaned closer to Sophie, whispering promises of better days. Promises I wasn't sure I could keep. But in that moment, all I had was hope and the unwavering love for my daughter. The silence in the room was broken by a call from my friend Lisa, who worked as a realtor for a local company. I sat in the dimly lit hospital cafeteria, clutching a lukewarm cup of coffee. My mind was a whirlwind of betrayal and shock after Lisa's call. Mark was selling our house, our home. Anger and disbelief swirled within me, fueling a determination I hadn't felt in months. Lisa slid into the seat across from me, her expression a mix of concern and anger. I can't believe he's doing this, Lily. Selling your house while you're here, with Sophie. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my shaking hands. I need you to delay the sale, Lisa. Buy me some time. Lisa nodded, her eyes hard. I'll do what I can, but we don't have much time. He's pushing for a quick sale. I leaned forward, my voice low and firm. I won't let him get away with this. He thinks he can just steal my house and run off with whoever she is? Lisa reached out, her hand gripping mine. Do you have a plan? A plan. The word echoed in my mind. I had been reactive for too long, letting life and Mark's indifference dictate my days. But not anymore. I'm going to fight back. I'll start by talking to a lawyer. There has to be a way to stop this. Lisa's expression shifted to one of support. Good. You fight this, Lily. And I'm here, every step of the way. I nodded, feeling a spark of resolve. And I'll need to gather evidence. Proof of his betrayal, the fraud. Anything that can help my case. Let's start with the house sale, Lisa suggested. I'll dig up everything I can on the buyer, the deal, anything out of the ordinary. I sipped my coffee, its bitterness mirroring my mood. I can't believe he's doing this to me, to Sophie. After everything we've been through. Lisa's hand tightened around mine. He's a coward, Lily. And he's going to regret underestimating you. I stood up, my resolve strengthening. He's going to pay for this, Lisa. He's going to pay for hurting my daughter, for trying to take away our home. I'll make sure of it. Lisa stood with me, her eyes fierce. Let's do this, Lily. Let's show him he picked the wrong woman to mess with. Hidden from view, I stood just outside the realtor's office, my heart racing. Through the slightly ajar door, I could hear the voices inside. Mark was there, his tone smooth and confident as he spoke to the potential buyers. And she was there too, his mistress, her laughter tinkling like a bell, completely oblivious to the storm she was a part of. I watched as Mark handed over a stack of papers to the buyers. His charm was on full display, the same charm that had once swept me off my feet. 
This is a fantastic opportunity, he was saying. A beautiful house, great location, you're getting a steal. The buyers, a middle-aged couple, nodded, their expressions a mix of eagerness and caution. The wife leafed through the documents, her husband leaning over to look. It all seems in order, she murmured. Mark's mistress, a young woman with bright red lipstick, laughed and leaned closer to Mark. Told you it would be easy, she whispered, loud enough for me to hear. I felt a surge of anger, but I forced myself to stay put, to observe. This was about gathering evidence, understanding the depth of Mark's deceit. The husband looked up, a question in his eyes. And the current owner? She's agreed to all this? Mark's response was swift, a lie so smooth it sounded like truth. Absolutely. She's, moved on. Wants to sell the place quickly. I clenched my fists, my nails digging into my palms. How could he lie so blatantly? The audacity of it made my blood boil. Lisa, who was playing her part in my game, intervened. We can proceed with the sale as soon as you're ready. The couple exchanged a look, then nodded. We're ready. This is a deal we don't want to miss. I watched as they began to sign the papers, the finality of each stroke like a dagger in my heart. But I needed to stay focused. This was not the time for emotions, it was the time for action. Mark's laughter brought me back to the moment. He was toasting with the buyers, his mistress clinging to his arm. To new beginnings, he said, raising his glass. I stepped into the room, my gaze fixed on Mark. Enjoying yourself, Mark? Everyone turned, shock and confusion on their faces. Mark's smile faltered. Lily, what are you doing here? I walked up to them, my steps firm. I'm here to stop you from making the biggest mistake of your life. Mark's mistress scoffed, rolling her eyes. What are you talking about? The deal is done. I smiled, but it was cold, devoid of any warmth. Is it, now? Because I don't remember signing off on selling my house. The buyers looked uncomfortable, exchanging glances. We were told everything was in order, the husband said, his voice uncertain. Mark stepped forward, trying to assert control. Lily, you're confused. This is for the best. I shook my head. No, Mark. The only confusion here is yours if you think you can forge my signature and get away with it. The room went silent. Mark's face turned a shade paler. You can't prove anything, he blurted out. I pulled out a set of documents from my bag. Actually, I can. And I have. These are the real papers. The ones you have are forgeries. Mark's mistress tugged at his arm. Mark, what's she talking about? Tell me this isn't true. But Mark was speechless, his usual confidence shattered. That's when the door opened, and two police officers walked in. One of the officers looked directly at Mark. Mark Johnson? You're under arrest for fraud and forgery. Mark's face drained of color. He looked at me, his eyes filled with disbelief. You called the cops? I met his gaze, my voice steady. Yes, I did. You broke the law, Mark. And you tried to steal my home. As the officers handcuffed Mark, his mistress started to cry, her makeup smearing. The buyers quickly gathered their things, eager to distance themselves from the situation. One of the officers turned to me. We'll need your statement, ma'am. I nodded, feeling a sense of justice. Of course, officer. As they led Mark away, he looked back at me, his expression a mix of anger and regret. But I felt no sympathy. He had made his choice, and now he was facing the consequences. Lisa smiled at me, nodding her head approvingly. I smiled back and left the office, a weight lifted off my shoulders. I had stood up for myself and Sophie. I had fought back. And this was just the beginning. After Mark's arrest, I found myself in the lawyer's office, the walls lined with law books and the air heavy with the scent of leather. My lawyer, Mr. Thompson, was a no-nonsense man in his fifties, his face etched with lines of experience. He glanced at the file in front of him. Lily, your husband's actions have opened up a big can of worms. The fraud charge is serious. I sat across from him, my hands clasped tightly in my lap. 
I know, Mr. Thompson. But I couldn't let him get away with it. Not after everything. Mr. Thompson nodded, understanding in his eyes. I respect that. Now, about the divorce and custody battle. You're in a strong position, but it won't be easy. I leaned forward. I'm ready for it. I have to do this for Sophie. She deserves a stable home. The lawyer shuffled some papers. What about alimony and child support? Given Mark's likely incarceration, it's going to be complicated. I sighed, a mix of determination and sadness in my voice. I want what's fair for Sophie. She's my priority. As for Mark, he made his choices. Mr. Thompson looked at me, his expression serious. You're a strong woman, Lily. We'll fight for what's right for you and your daughter. As I left the office, my phone rang. It was Mark. I hesitated, but answered. What do you want, Mark? His voice came through, laced with desperation. Lily, please. I messed up. I know that. But don't take Sophie away from me. I stopped in my tracks, anger rising. You thought about Sophie when you tried to sell our house? When you spent your days with that woman? He was silent for a moment. I, I lost my way. But I'm her father, Lily. I love her. I clenched my phone tighter. Love isn't just words, Mark. It's actions. You failed us both. Mark's voice cracked. I'll do anything to make it right. Please, Lily. I shook my head, even though he couldn't see me. It's too late for that. You'll see Sophie, but only under supervised visits. That's non-negotiable. There was a pause, then a soft, defeated sigh from Mark. Okay, I understand. The days were a whirlwind. I spent most of my time with Sophie, ensuring she felt loved and secure amidst the chaos. Her laughter was a bomb to my wounded heart. One afternoon, while Sophie napped, I received a call from my sister, Laura. Hey, Lily, how are you holding up? Laura's voice was always a mix of concern and strength. I sighed, staring out the window. I'm managing, Laura. It's tough, but I'm getting through it. Laura was silent for a moment. I heard about Mark. I'm so sorry, Lily, but I'm proud of you for standing up to him. I smiled faintly. Thanks, Laura. It's hard, but I have to be strong for Sophie. She needs me now more than ever. Laura's voice softened. And what about you? Who's being strong for Lily? Her question caught me off guard. I had been so focused on Sophie and the legal battle that I hadn't given much thought to myself. I, I don't know, Laura. I guess I haven't had time to think about that. Laura was firm. You need to take care of yourself too, Lily. You can't pour from an empty cup. I knew she was right. I'll try, Laura. It's just, everything feels overwhelming right now. You're not alone, Lily. Remember that. I'm here for you, always. The next day, I visited a therapist, Dr. Martin. His office was a small, cozy room with soft lighting and a comfortable couch. He greeted me with a warm smile. Lily, it's good to meet you. How can I help you today? I took a deep breath, unloading my worries and fears. I just feel so lost, Dr. Martin. Everything I knew, everything I trusted, it's all been turned upside down. Dr. Martin nodded, his voice gentle. It's understandable to feel that way after what you've been through. But it's important to remember that this is a chapter in your life, not the whole story. His words resonated with me. Over the next few weeks, I started to take small steps towards reclaiming my life. I joined a support group for single parents. The first meeting was daunting, but as I listened to others share their stories, I realized I wasn't alone. Welcome, Lily, said the group leader, a kind woman named Beth. We're here to support each other, to share our struggles and our victories. I shared my story, my voice steady but filled with emotion. The group listened, their faces a tapestry of empathy and understanding. After the meeting, a woman named Sarah approached me. Your story is inspiring, Lily. You're stronger than you realize. 
Her words lifted my spirits. Maybe I was stronger than I thought. Maybe, just maybe, I could turn this painful chapter into a story of resilience and hope. Sitting in my living room, the early morning light filtering through the curtains, I reflected on the tumultuous journey that had led to this moment of tranquility. The divorce papers, now signed and finalized, lay on the coffee table, a testament to my newfound independence. The legal battle had been long and arduous. I had sued Mark for a substantial portion of his property, determined to secure a stable future for Sophie and myself. The court's decision had been in our favor. Mark, now serving a real sentence for his fraudulent activities, had lost much of what he had once held dear. His mistress, caught in the web of deceit, was slapped with a hefty fine, payable to me as restitution. I remembered sitting in the courtroom, watching Mark and his mistress turn on each other, each trying to deflect blame. There was no love lost between them, only bitter accusations and desperate attempts to save themselves. Watching them, I felt a sense of satisfaction. They had gotten what they deserved. Their betrayal and greed had led them to this downfall. But amidst the chaos of legal proceedings and emotional upheavals, there was a silver lining. Sophie, my brave little girl, had made a swift recovery after her surgery. Her laughter and energy filled our home with a warmth that had been missing for far too long. As I sipped my morning coffee, I thought about our future. It was a future I had fought hard for, a future that seemed bright and promising. Sophie was my priority, my beacon of hope. Together, we had weathered a storm and emerged stronger. I glanced at the pictures on the mantel, images of Sophie and me at the park, at the zoo, smiling and carefree. They were more than just photographs, they were reminders of our resilience, our ability to find joy amidst adversity. Sophie bounded into the room, her hair a tousled mess, her eyes bright with excitement. Mommy, are we going to the park today? I smiled, my heart swelling with love. Yes, sweetheart. We're going to have a great day. She clapped her hands, her laughter echoing through the room. Yay! I love the park. As I watched her play, I realized that this was what mattered the most. The struggles, the pain, and the betrayal were behind us. What lay ahead was a path of healing and new adventures.